Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back. I think it's going to be a good one tonight. We've got a lot of ideas swirling around for this level. I think, uh, yeah, like I said, it's going to be a good one. <clears throat> hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I know you missed out last time on uh, how we finished up here. We were starting a little, a uh, kind of like grub terrarium. Oh yeah, speaking of grub, is it in the project yet? No, it's just a Miocene at the moment, right? It looks pretty outside. Don't worry, there's gonna be a uh, a roof, right? And it's going to kind of like connect up the, at the top and there's gonna be like lights blaring down essentially what this is is like a um, terrarium for grub study so that's like uh, come in here and there'll be like observation rooms and stuff yeah grub study not a uh, not to be confused with the uh, cafeteria later. Uh, that's the other grub study. I'm here all night, folks. Nothing but bad jokes. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba. How's everything coming in, by the way? Like, volume and everything. I, uh... I adjusted some stuff. Um... We should write some email logs about Soviet professors with PhDs in grub studies. Yeah, yeah. We should also write a bad joke, um... Somewhere in, like, uh, an email where it's, like, going back and forth. And, uh... One of, one of the, uh... The guys is just, like... Yeah, the only grub studying I want to do is uh, in the mess hall. <laughs> yeah. I felt like in uh, Prey there was a lot of, like, kind of funny uh, back and forth emails that you could, like, find between, uh, like, scientists or just, like, co-workers and stuff. So, I really like the idea of, like, maybe adding, uh, like, these just, like, terminals in, like, a bunch of different rooms and just, like, having, uh correspondences going in uh what could be kind of funny too well not funny but uh something interesting is if one of the soviet scientists was like corresponding with one of the colonists outside um having some second thoughts about maybe joining up and uh, warning him about this place and that could be uh one of the guys that you find out in the overworld right where uh I know at one point we had talked about there being this, like, essentially dead guy, like, stuck up on a rock that he, like, used to escape uh, grubs in the surrounding area. And he had, like, the code to, like, get into the Soviet moon base, but um, uh, because he died, he wasn't able to do it. And, you know, you find that, uh, that code after, like, helping uh, the guy, like, finish his test or whatever. Anyway, that's like one of their thoughts. But I, I like the idea that there is uh, essentially like a Soviet mole who is like a, a Planet American patriot who willingly joined their ranks. Yeah, tying it all together. Oh man, this this should really go somewhere. Um, oh, you know what? That could, like, lead to, like, an observation deck over here. That'd be kind of cool. Because I want to give, like, multiple ways in and out, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to, like, tying tying everything together in just whatever way I can. 
Um, let me see. We're gonna need like some sort of glass at some point, cause um, all the glass materials I have down here is like kind of iffy. Yeah, yeah. The game definitely needs like some sort of Soviet-style terminal, uh, as opposed to like these, like you know, very Planet America slash neutral sci-fi terminals. Um, it would be like more angular and like sharp and maybe even like, I don't know, feel like it's like gas powered almost. That'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> Just like a terminal that like shakes and has like smoke coming out of it. Has the sound of like a generator built into it. It's very like industrial and, um, non techy right? Uh, let's see. I really need, um, I just need different pieces at some point, right? And it's like, I have them here. I just haven't reshaped them to be correct for our grid system. Um, Maybe one of these days on stream, I'll like. Fix that. What's this? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um. Is it wall D? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, like the scaling's all wrong on it too. Um, I don't think the, the mesh itself is kind of fine, so. Maybe I just, Jeez, where did I keep it? Um, File Explorer. Folder view. Okay, proxy meshes. Open. This is all root stuff. Don't pay attention to that. Um. Is it? I don't know. You know what I could do? I could just uh, find this and then yeah, there it is. Okay, so wall slant in. That that's not right. While lower slant in, okay. See, the naming convention made sense at the time. Uh, and to be honest, it still makes sense, but it's like hard to remember, right? UVs, ooh, ew. Ow. This is just unacceptable. You can always just put the default grid material on until you fix it up. Yeah, or I could just fix it up right now. That's also a possibility, right? Um, right, that's the easier thing to do. Unwrap. Streams buffering? Oh. Um, hmm. Let me the stream quality down a little bit it should be the same as normal but i don't know the the stream's been like kind of shaky lately 
I'm gonna bump it down to 4,000 kilobytes. Hopefully that uh, fixes things. Those UVs look fine to you. Um, I don't think they like line. See, the thing is, like right now, look, they're. Scaled uh, wrong, and I want to use the same material on them, right? I guess I could just like make a slant out version of the material. That's that's lazy, right? We don't want to do that. Hello, hello, <laughs> Elemental Magic's card game. Welcome to the stream. We are currently talking about building a dungeon level uh, for our game, uh, Captain McSpace Biff, and. Uh, I am berating myself currently for not properly unwrapping some of our like proxy meshes. I think I'm just gonna like leave it as is. <laughs> Today is your lucky day for I Elemental Grace your stream with my presence. Oh, truly, truly luck has has finally become on our side thank you so much for gracing us with your presence dude always great to have someone of your esteem joining someone like us in the slums <laughs> you have a game idea and you need a developer to make it well i can't guarantee that we can make it but um I'd be interested to hear the game idea nonetheless. Go ahead and shoot. My guess is card game of some kind. I know I'm going out on a limb there, but uh, going by the name, that'd be uh, my first guess. <laughs> oh, you already made a card game. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Congratulations on uh, making a game. To be honest, uh, not that many people can do that. Uh, which is why Twitch has its like own category for it that is like kind of dry. Like there's not a lot of devs in uh, in the cat. To be honest. Uh, let's see. That's looking correct. This is different. Okay. Well, shoot. What's the what's the game idea? So you know how if you're in two dimensions and look in a certain direction, you see everything in a pie slice, uh, scale by Euclidean distance. Okay. Yes. I I am following. Similarly, if you're in three dimensions and look in a certain direction, you see everything in a cone. Again, scaled by Euclidean distance. Now, 3D Euclidean distance, but the formula is similar. Understandable. I'm tracking. I'm following. I'm not the brightest bulb in the uh, in the Christmas drawer, but uh, you know, I'm I'm with you. Very very interesting. Oh, by the way, uh, F6. Teen enthusiast in the chat is uh, one of the other devs on the game. And by well, one of the other devs, it, I mean the only other dev. Uh, we're a two man team. But uh, yeah, this is like right up his alley, right? Like, well, we can extend this to 40. There are 40 games which involve experiencing various three dimensional cross sections. I want a game where you actually see in four dimensions naturally. Like the same way it works for three dimensions. Interesting. Okay. I like the concept. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, anything that has to do with like space manipulation or uh, like, Euc like Euclidean scale, like non-Euclidean spaces is like always really, really interesting. So it's an adventure game where you see all the different types of manifolds in four dimensions. Spherical, the Klein bottle, etc. Okay. I gotcha. Kind of 
kind of like a Lewis Carroll style adventure game and some math education. That is a really cool concept. I like that a lot. Um, see, we had talked about one of our games at one point in time. Uh, we had looked into doing some non-Euclidean spaces for, like, say, like portals and stuff, uh, where you would like be able to like uh, walk up to a door and like open the door, and it would be, um, you know, a completely different scene, and you'd be able to walk around the door, and you know, the scene wouldn't exist. Um, but this is like taking it to like an even greater extreme. Like you would have to do some, I'm even trying to think about like how you would set something like this up. Um, yeah, I understand why you, uh, you need some help with this, man. I mean, it's a really cool concept. Uh, unfortunately myself as a lowly, uh, animator and uh, level designer, it is beyond, my uh, understanding and thinking. So this is not non-Euclidean, this is all Euclidean. Although you would be seeing various manifolds which represent non-Euclidean space embedded in for Euclidean space, okay. <laughs> I see, yeah. I basically need to write my own graphics engine from scratch. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is, um, something along those lines is, um, I mean, the, the amount of work you would have to get to get a standard render engine to, like, even be able to do something like that. Um, a good example of, like, someone who talks about similar ideas uh, is uh, Jonathan Blow. So, the guy who made uh, Braid and uh, The Witness. Um, he merits... Uh, building your own engines from scratch when you're trying to attempt something new that isn't generally practiced in other engines. So yeah, like what F16 enthusiast is saying, especially when you consider that 3D graphics are already a 2D projection of 3D, getting um, a 4D space to be properly projected into 3D when you're transferring that into 2D um, would, would take some serious re reworking of like engines and just general math. Um, at least to my understanding, right? But again, this is not a concept or thought I've th thought about all that much. Uh, yeah, above, above our pay grade, unfortunately. Badass idea though. Like I love the, uh, just when people are like, trying to find ways to tread new ground when it comes to like game design is always like really really cool we were talking the other day about how like portal as a result was like one of the most like revolutionary games uh of our generation um and you know that's why they were able to like you know come up with the tag thinking with portals because you know something like that hadn't existed before right yeah, exactly. We see a 3D as a 2D projections, but then for 4D, people refuse to project directly onto 2D, but instead take 3D cross sections and then project that onto 2D. The result is a confused mess. Yeah, that's my thought too. It's it's two, two steps away, right? Um, so being able to find a way that's going to bridge those gaps is... Um, I think we're going to be very, very difficult, um, especially if you don't have proper understanding of like rendering tech and like rendering pipelines. Because I also feel like this would be a very um, potentially heavy in performance, depending on how it was like set up and built. But again, really badass idea, dude. Um, Portal is an example of non-Euclidean geometry, which I also like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, is this something sort of what you were talking about? And then Will provided the uh, image of the Tesseract, which is a uh, pretty, pretty standard like four-dimensional object, right? 
Yeah, the task rack does a trick to convert the 4D into a representation in 3D and then uses different techniques to project from 3D to 2D, which is the standard projection, which we're used to. Correct. Yep. The problem is... Um, I don't know. I don't know if the average like gamer is even ready for something like this. Like uh, being able to interpret like this information to someone is gonna be like really really difficult, right? Type Q. I also love that Portal's a first-person shooter. Yeah, yeah, like. Something that is going to make you generally manipulate the space you are in is going to generally be a third person type of game, right? Um, Cause it, you know, it kind of gets the player an opportunity to see more of the environment around them. But um, being able to like quickly snap and like place the portals in like different, different places, um, I think is what really like makes the game, right? Because it's not like a reactionary shooter, but um, having the precision of being able to specifically place it somewhere just feels so much better. Is Portal really non-Euclidean though? Isn't it still Euclidean space just with teleporting basically? <laughs> um, there's an argument that Portal could be considered non-Euclidean, right? So... For instance, uh, if you were to, uh, let me actually pull this out real quick. Um, say for instance, you had a portal on uh, this wall right here, right? Uh, you can walk around to the other side of the wall, but the portal is still showing the room that you would be teleporting to. And that's generally how people operate uh, non-Euclidean spaces. Um, Stanley Parable is a good example of a game that does this as well, where you'll be like rounding a corner and, uh, you know, it's like projecting the view of the area you're going to be, but essentially it's like keeping track of two different like player points, like where the player is and where the player is going to be. Um, in Portal, it's just like swapping them, right? It's just like actually teleporting you to the portal and then like launching you out with the same momentum um in a lot of cases how people do um non-euclidean spaces is they'll like have two different spaces and then uh player models synced up and then switch between them seamlessly right that's one way to do it <clears throat> In order to orient yourself, there should be intuitive objects that exist in four dimensions. We can generalize a planet to 4D instead of 2D horizontal dimensions and one vertical one. We can have three horizontal and one vertical, but which other natural objects exist? What would a fruit tree look like, etc.? I don't know. That is a very interesting concept and proposition, though. And I think... Um, you know, there's a lot of potential with that, right? By the way, if there are two horizontal dimensions, the direction we are facing can be represented with a single angle, theta, but with three horizontal dimensions, we need three angles, pitch, roll, and yaw, kind of like a flight simulator in space, except these are just the horizontal dimensions, and there's additionally a vertical one. Interesting. Hard to vi F6 enthusiast is responding hard to visualize the three horizontal dimensions all have to be perpendicular to each other too right yes huh. okay interesting yeah um for a concept like this having some sort of like visualization would help a lot but um again like i said this is a really cool concept and i do think you should pursue it in some form that said, um, finding a developer that's willing to like take the reins on uh, what is essentially uncharted territory is uh, going to be no small feat in its own right, right? Why 
are these? Hmm. Yeah, I just need more pieces. More pieces! Did you know that 4D rotations, quaternions, are a foundational block for 3D animation? Hmm. The question is, after playing this game a lot, would you be able to visualize four dimensions naturally? It probes a question about human intelligence. Is our spatial reasoning adapted specifically to our own context, or is it a universal form of intellectual ability? That is an even greater question. Yeah, like... And that, that's what I was saying earlier. I don't know if... Like, you, you would be able to see four dimensions, right? But the ability to actually process um, four dimensions properly and understand them and be able to navigate a four-dimensional space... I don't know if uh, the average person would be able to do that. Uh, you'd have to find a way to, again, properly translate that four-dimensional space to 3D and then to 2D, right? Um, you would maybe have a better chance, like F-16 Enthusiast was saying, in VR, uh, since in VR you are operating in a 3D space, right? Like, it, 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 it's still a 2D image, but you still have a better uh, grasp at the uh, 3D space that you're moving in. So, again, super cool concept. Not exactly sure how you would build this. So, but yeah, dude, thanks for sharing your idea. This is dope. This is like the, this is like the whole reason we like do these streams, right? We're always like looking here, like other people's ideas for games, like what they're working on. If they have any idea for like our games, that kind of thing. Also, assuming you could build it, how would it look in VR? Yeah, I had this question as well. VR is based on depth perception. I'm not sure if depth perception would be able to reorient itself to four dimensions. In terms of the math, it should be able to, but is human biology fundamentally more limited? I do not know. Yeah, that's, you know, one of those, one of those questions. It's like, are we limited to the dimensions that we can operate and move in on a day-to-day -day basis or um, are we able to potentially adapt to more um, a good example of something like this is um, when 3d games started to crop up right um, a lot of people could not process a, uh, a 3d game on a 2d plane and then uh, more so, they, they had trouble with things like first-person shooters, right? Like, uh, when Doom released uh, originally, um, people were, like, vomiting playing the game, right? It, they just couldn't, they couldn't handle it. Um, watching, watching another character move in a uh, 2D space was fine because it was very linear and they didn't have to, like, adapt their eyes or vision or, like, essentially put themselves into the character. But the moment they saw things from like a first person perspective um, in a 3D game uh, through a screen, they couldn't handle it, right? And that was like one of the things we came across um, very similarly when we were developing Deadlock. Um, we put out a, this was back in like 2016, uh, back when like the Vive had like first released, right? We put out this uh, demo where the player could move themselves through a 3D environment uh, using touchpad controls. Uh, but because there was like no feedback in the inner ear, it made people like very, very sick, right? Uh, and they, everyone who played it said they couldn't adapt to it and that, you know, moving, moving your avatar in VR in a 3D space without physically moving yourself was, uh, impossible to do without making people violently sick and here we are less than a decade later and that's the primary source of movement for uh every new vr shooter coming out so i think with this idea you could potentially butt up against some like general rejection from people and just like again just general 
uh, misunderstanding, but I don't know. I think it's it's probably an idea worth attempting, right? It's new ground. It hasn't been treaded. Of course, if we don't really know if a fourth spatial dimension could even exist in reality as we know it. One encouraging thing is we can play games like Mario in 2D and I and don't think to move around barriers by using the third dimension. We understand the world is 2D even though we don't live in one. So we clearly can generalize our spatial ability downward and dimensionally. <laughs> F16 enthusiast. Is math even real? If it exists, where does it exist, etc. Yeah. Interesting point. Yeah, that's another worry I have. Will this make people feel sick and disoriented? Yeah, again, this is this is like a another issue entirely. It's like whether someone can like understand something like a tesseract, for instance, uh, by observing it and kind of keeping track of it is different from someone being able to navigate a world built out of a, essentially what are like tesseracts not exactly a tesseract but four dimensional spaces um, I don't I don't know if we're equipped to do something like that so even if you could build it um, I don't know if the average person could operate in it and to me at least as like a, from a developer standpoint I feel like if you build something and no one can operate it or play it, then uh, it's not a wasted effort, but it does negate a lot of the building, right? It's like, I'm not going to write a book uh, and then tuck it away under a bed forever for no one to read. You can do that, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, writing a book in a language that no one can read makes about the same amount of sense and that's that's essentially what this would be um yeah I, I don't know it's like one of those things where you have to like attempt it before you know for sure um but the level of effort for an attempt i don't know if it would be worth it for the average person right um you'd have to have a better understanding of this kind of stuff than i do so i wish i could give you some advice um, I think it is an idea potentially worth pursuing, but just know it's going to be essentially a Herculean effort to, for one, work out this type of game, right? And then two, be able to build it after that. Yeah, what F16 Enthusiast said, uh, it's you need to find someone who's both extremely talented in terms of engine development and a theoretical mathematician. And then also beyond that, someone who wants to make it right. Those are, uh, I don't, I don't think we have very many of those, like just lying around. I think the type of person to, uh, potentially build something like that is, um, maybe already building it right there was a game um that someone was building that was like a technically a 4d um fps i think it was called space flux um where you were controlling essentially multiple people at like different depths and you would like move through the environment and it would like scale with you, right? So like the closer you'd get to it, like uh, everything would like consistently scale. But I can like... This? Yeah, this. So like, as you're moving, you're consistently getting smaller and larger and you're, you're operating in different spaces all at the same time.
fractal based like four dimensional stuff but again that's like not quite what you're talking about right similar concept though One issue for me is how am I going to differentiate between my graphics library being bugged, poorly designed 4D meshes, or simply embedded visualizing. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of roadblocks, um, especially if you don't have like even if you're like a, a pro at like building 3D games, it's a potential potential issue that you could like butt up against. Anyway, dope idea. I don't think it's impossible. I just think it's uh, probably going to be very, very difficult. You have to get going, but I actually really like the idea. I'd love to keep chatting about it. You should join our Discord. Yeah, you should join our Discord. Uh, this is like the kind of stuff we like love, like mulling over, right? I mean, we're just generally talking about like any kind of good game design or uh, it's like not even all about our game, right? Like there's other developers in our Discord that just kind of like hang out. Um, and who knows? Maybe one of these days you'll run across the the right guy for the job yeah it's great having you f16 enthusiast see you next time um tomorrow we're going to be doing a co-op stream together um where will f16 enthusiast is going to be finishing up our uh our beloved our beloved grub Oh, yeah, that's another good point. Um, F-16 Enthusiast uh, is pretty well, like, integrated into j just different industries. Um, so it is possible that he might come across someone that would be able to help you in this kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um, we're going to be doing some co-op streaming tomorrow to finish uh, this guy up is going to be doing some texturing for him and I'm going to, to continue to work on this level. Hopefully I'll you know, be a lot further along by then. Yeah, join yeah, join the Discord, man. I mean again, like if you even like come across more ideas like this, we can potentially help workshop them, right? I mean three minds are better than one in most cases. Also, kind of want to make a 4D representation of biblical angels. Yeah, dude, that would be so cool, right? They have many eyes, many heads. You can maybe make them that look normal in a 3D projection, but have a ton of eyes and heads in their normal four dimensions. Maybe they could be one of the objects in the game. That'd be pretty cool, dude. Yeah, I mean, um, the way like uh, the Bible like describes them, it's like just like rotating spheres and like different eyes. It's and I think the uh, whole thing is like they very well could have been described as what you're talking about as like essentially a four dimensional being that, you know, man isn't exactly ready to be describing. So that would be pretty cool to have in a game. Um, that's right. I was having issues with this already where they're not quite lining up. Yeah, that's that makes sense because if these are stretched, they're not going to be the same distance as those. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, okay, well, you know what? Only the corners can be slanted until I make some new pieces, which I will eventually do. I promise. I promise I'm going to make some new pieces, but... Uh, you know, right now, this is essentially... It's not a gray box, but... The concept is like the same as a gray box, right? We're just like throwing some snap kit pieces together very, 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 very quickly in order to kind of rapidly iterate on some ideas. Um, and then eventually, oops, did not mean to do that. 
um, eventually we will come back in and do some set dressing, do some piece swaps, but having the general layout being able to be like built super quick in Unreal is um, at least handy to me. Um, I know some people don't, you know, like doing it this way, but works for me. Yeah, Elemental, uh, these concepts are like super cool, dude. It's it's cool to have you hanging out. Like you said, it was, uh, we are we are graced by your presence. Because, uh, yeah, interesting conversations like this, I'm all about them. Anything that like gets the old uh, brain engine chugging, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. The good news is I've done some 3D game development from nearly scratch. Example, I've made procedurally generated fruit trees in three dimensions. Definitely going to be a lot harder to make four dimensions, but I likely need to be able to do a lot of programming work because tools like Blender are not going to work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to butt up against some, like pretty hard ceilings when it comes to like setting up stuff like that in Blender. But hey, that's awesome that you have some experience, you know, just already under your belt, right? Um, especially when it comes to like newer concepts, it's always good to at least have a uh, understanding of what are essentially like fundamentals before you punch up. Um, a lot of people, they try and bite off more that they can like chew, right? Uh, especially people with like new ideas right like I've heard so many instances of like oh man I've got this like idea for a game right and it's just this like it's gonna have like all these crazy mechanics and it's gonna be this like massive multiplayer world with like zombies and like team chat and base building and like an in-game economy and like uh NPCs with like their own AI and can like adapt and everything. It's just like, okay, well, you know, that's a pretty heavy idea that you got there, but um, you know, what kind of experience do you have making games up to this point? Like what what do you have, you know, like under your belt in terms of experience? It's like, oh, I've never made one before, but I'm sure I'm sure I could like learn it as I go. And it's just like Oh man, dude, it's like, yeah, yeah, you could, but um, you know. We're all only human, and there's a limited number of hours in the day, so maybe uh, maybe get some experience under your belt before you uh, try and climb Mount Everest, right? Start with a hill, and then uh, work your way up, because uh, if you don't do that, you're going to die halfway up the peak, and uh, that's not any good for anybody. The design of my game is the sum of every experience I've had of wishing a game I was playing had an additional feature. Yep. Well, to be honest, um, I think it's important that if you are going to be making a game, it is something you actually want to exist, right? Um, and then you, you work up to it. But... Again, that idea should be within the realm of possibility and you should be able to acknowledge your limits as a person. I think that's important. Um, I do think a, like a level of cockiness is almost necessary for game development too. Uh, especially when you're like first breaking into it. Like you need to, you need to believe that you can tackle this thing, right? And you're going to punch up against it and it's going to kick your ass. But, uh, the important thing is like, you don't give up on it. Right? Like you, you go like, okay, well, maybe I didn't know as much as I thought I did, but you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to learn, learn these things and, you know, readjust my plan. And eventually I'll have a game. Right. And it doesn't need to be some magnum opus, just like perfect thing. Uh, it's just gotta, you know, exist. 
Like it's better to have like a like a smaller game that maybe isn't your dream game that actually exists versus like this perfect magnum opus like this like grand idea that you've always had and it just never get finished so and you know it's something i'm kind of guilty of um where you know i have an idea and feature creep just gets a hold of it right because especially if you get like excited about an idea you're just like okay here's the idea right and it's super cool and it's lean and it's trim and i love it and i'm gonna make it and then you get into developing it and it's like it's going like pretty good right you're like hitting your strides and you know uh eventually you're just like okay well this is gonna blend so well into this other idea i have for the game and you know before you know it your feature creeped out and uh even the original concept isn't like in your game anymore. So. Yeah, my goal is a cute little game, kind of like Braid. It's not trying to be the most amazing thing ever, just exploring one specific idea and doing a few cool things with it. Obviously, this is a lot harder than Braid, but similar mentality. Yeah, I know how Feature Creep works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying for you, but just anyone who's potentially watching this, either right now or, you know, later. Um, still working on the card game. I started in 2012. I did release in beta. Hey, you know what? Congratulations for releasing beta. And I mean that because there are so many games that, you know, just never make it off the shelf in any form, right? Getting, getting, getting to the point where you have a playable executable that doesn't automatically like brick someone's computer is, is a feat, right? I mean, game development's hard. Um, so, getting something to alpha or beta or just, you know, even like an ex executable on like itch or something, that's that's worthy of praise because it's, it's difficult, man. Especially if you have like a really small team and not a lot of time to do it. And that's something I speak from experience. You know, there's only so many hours of the day, and especially if this isn't your, like, full-time gig, it's hard to, um, find the time for it, and the energy, and the money. <laughs> so, yeah, congrats to you, man. That's really cool. Truth be told, this is, um, this is a game we've been working on since 2012. Um not it is and it isn't right like um originally uh captain mcspace biff was it's kind of like this was like our first venture um into game development this was back in 2012 and this is when we were in we were in high school teaching ourselves you know how to code model everything and there was like you know nothing online at that time right so it was just all trial and error and you know we ran a kickstarter for it and we were just like a couple of high school kids and we had no idea what we were doing right we didn't know to like go online and market it we just thought you know like hey we're gonna put it on kickstarter and it's gonna make you know a million billion dollars and it did not reach its goal it didn't even make it a fifth of the way there but you know over the years it, the idea of it was like still close to our hearts so as we went on to develop other games and get those published and put those out and you know work on prototypes and all these other things this game's kind of like been like itching at the back of our mind and um you know like uh about a year and a half ago we decided to try it again you know take another swing at it and uh Actually, no, it was like closer to two years ago. We spent about a year uh, working on it in Unity, and we just, our heads butted up against so many ceilings and so many problems. Uh, we just couldn't quite make the game we wanted to in the Unity engine. Um, so we moved over to Unreal, started learning Unreal, and that took a little while because, you know, we were Unity devs for 
basically a decade and hadn't really touched Unreal, so. We spent so much time building like all these systems and things to allow us to like make the game faster, all the while like trying to learn Unreal itself. Um, and here we are about almost exactly a year later and we have, you know, pretty cohesive game to show for it. Uh, obviously this isn't enough like to show in this scene right here, but there's like more in other scenes. So what's your card game about, man? I'm interested to hear about it. Like what's the, uh, what's the concept behind it? always love hearing about, you know, stuff other people have worked on. It's a perfect information tactical battle game. Interesting. So if you zoom in, the game looks like Magic the Gathering, and if you zoom out, the game looks like chess. Huh. I'm not quite sure I can visualize that. See ya, see ya, elementalshowdown.com. Dude, nice. There's some AI you can play against. Yeah, dude, uh, yeah, join the Discord and drop that in the game channel. Um, that's something I'd be interested to check out. Cause I'm a huge fan of chess. Um, and I used to play some Magic the Gathering in high school. I haven't played it in years, but I know a lot of people who like games like Magic the Gathering. In fact, uh, I have a couple friends going to like some um, tournaments and stuff soon. Yeah, so I might, uh, I might be sending some, some new fans your way, man. Hey. Thanks for the follow, Elemental. Good to have you here play a lot of chess too nice uh one of my friends actually is um one of the um developers of um and maintainers of chess.com shout out to my boy jesse yeah actually uh just last week i was teaching my uh girlfriend how to uh play chess and funny enough uh we were playing chess in a game called uh it takes two uh they in like one of the levels uh, oh man that's such a that's such a cool game right um essentially if you don't know what it is it's a uh, co-op uh puzzle platformer game um and you know it's it's two people who are turned into dolls and are are like trying to work through their relationship while also like uh, making their way back to like their humanity, right? I won't spoil too too much about it, but essentially all the levels have like different themes and mechanics, which is like what makes it such a cool concept, right? It's like every uh, level you're introduced to a new idea, and I think that's just from like a development standpoint, it's so impressive, right? Because you have to like test all these different ideas and mechanics, and they're all so cool and interesting. But anyway. Um, we came across a chessboard in one of the levels, and she had never played chess before, so I was like, all right, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna teach you chess in a completely different type of game. Yeah, nice concept party game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it can also be very frustrating if you're, uh, if the person you're playing with, uh, is not familiar with games and doesn't like have an affinity for uh, puzzles but um, I definitely recommend giving it a play it's I would put it up there with portal 2 in terms of like uh, co-op puzzle design and I love portal 2 right a similar game in a similar vein called super bunny man oh dude I want to check that out. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I've seen that. It's like a, it's like a platformer game where you can like grab your friend, right? 
physics-based co-op platformer about a guy in a rabbit costume. Oh, that looks like so much fun. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Well, thanks for the recommend. It. It's a 2D platformer. Very nice. Yeah, I'm not... I don't, like, play uh, puzzle games very often, but when I do... I tend to like them, you know? I mean... We make almost exclusively um, first-person shooters at Skunk Ape, but I've always been like a huge stickler for um, puzzle mechanics in games. Uh, anything Valve's ever put out, right? Most of their games have like... They may not be puzzle games, but they have like elements uh, of puzzles in them, right? Like Half-Life, I think you'd be hard-pressed to call it a puzzle game, but um, there's... There's physics puzzles that you have to, um, you know, work out before you can move on. And uh, we're going to do some stuff like that in uh, McSpace Piff, right? Um, if you can get the 4D world working, we'd be interested to see how FPS and ARPG could work in that context. I was going to start with adventure as the theme, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested, too. Hey man, if you get it working, sign me up for some playtesting, because uh, that sounds like such a dope concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the uh, puzzles in Mixed Space Biff are going to be of, a, uh, of an easier variety, right? Like, we, um, we kind of want Mixed Space Biff to be, like, the type of game you could, like, play with, like, your, like little cousin or something um so we want it to not be like super demanding mentally but um you know that doesn't mean you won't need some cooperation right and again i i don't think there's anything wrong with like challenging uh, a younger generation like um f16 enthusiast who was in here earlier uh, he grew up playing like Mystery Exile and like Riven and those types of games when he was like seven and like six. It was like his first type of game, which is to me that's like a crazy jump off point, right? It's just like most little kids are wanting to play like Mario or like I don't know, in his case, Nanosaur because <laughs> he was uh on a Mac and you know there weren't a lot of games on the Mac. Um, but yeah, starting as like starting with Mystery Exile and like Riven as like your first games as like a child is just funny to me as like a concept because it's just like I'm over here playing like Super Mario 64 and he's just like sitting there with a with a notepad like trying to like write down notes for later um, so he can like work out puzzles. You know, they did a, a, um, a remake of Riven recently that looked really, really good. Um, they brought it into the Unreal Engine, and uh, it's not a perfect recreation, but it, it is as good as I could imagine it being, right? Like, just gorgeous, gorgeous visuals. They reworked a couple things, too, uh, so it would work better with, like, a character controller because originally um how riven worked is it was like a series of like just like slides almost right like i think you could i don't know anyway um basically like you would like point on a part of the screen and it would like jump you to that point and then you'd like click on another point and it'd like jump you there and then you have to like move things with your mouse to like do puzzles and like remember sequences and that kind of thing um but to get it to like work in 3d you know they had to recreate everything because it it was all pre-rendered right and that's why it looked so good when it came out uh because it was like punching up against the tech of the time um they were able to do these like pre-rendered uh scenes and then for like all the cutscenes uh with the characters they were just vods of the developers like acting things out um and it was like a little weird at the time 
but uh, I think he's like added to a lot of the charm. So I want to weirdly, I want to say like one of the downgrades of the the new one is that it doesn't have that like weird first person campy uh, video acting, right? It's like all CG models now. Which I don't blame them for not doing videos, but uh, you can't help but like miss some of that charm. How about you, Elemental? What's some of your favorite games? What got what got you to be a game developer? Kakuji. Sorry. I forget how to pronounce that. I think it's get Keiju. Yeah. Altiel and Get Keiju don't exist anymore. God of Wars 2 and Risk of Rain 2. Yeah, I've, I've heard of all of them. Um, the only one I've played is uh, Risk of Rain 2, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I thought it did a good job of you know, being a um, roguelike. My brother plays a ton of it, or at least he did. It's always sad when like a really cool game just like stops existing, right? It hurts my feelings. It's understandable though and like Player populations just diminish over time. I don't expect devs to like support things forever, right? Especially if they're not making money, because uh, unfortunately we need money. So working on something when you're not getting paid for it is very rough. Your card game is designed as the spiritual successor to Altiel, though. Oh, nice. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like uh, there's probably a, uh, a need for it in the world then. If people are like, you know, looking to fill that void. Basically, you fixed all the mechanics you thought were broken and made new content. Yeah, see, I think um, some of the best like game design comes from like seeing a concept you like and being like, oh man, it's like, I love this game, right? But there's like a few things I'd like tweak to be just a, like a little different. So, you know, you sit down and you start working and Start trying to make a, a better version of the thing you like. That's how you get like all these like cross genre type games or um, games with just like new ideas, right? Like the whole roguelike genre um, kind of exists because people generally like the concept of the original rogue and games like NetHack and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, 
at the same time, those games are so extreme in like how they treat death. Um, so a rogue like is like a lighter version of that. So you know, you don't lose everything on every run. You just lose most of your stuff. Maybe you get to keep some upgrades, that kind of stuff. Man, this is bothering me. I gotta. I really just need to update these meshes at some point because they're they're z fighting and it is upsetting me. You only played a bit of net hack, got into more dungeon crawl, stone soup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those types of games are like super, super cool, right? Um, personally, I'm I'm a big fan of NetHack just because um, it's it's probably the closest um, like spiritual successor to the original Rogue, and it can be played on like basically anything, right? If you have like a command line computer, you can play you can play NetHack. Um, I, to be honest, I never played a ton of NetHack. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. It was um, it was more my friends that played it, but um, I always just really enjoyed um, either watching them play or just hearing them talk about it. Just conceptually, it was a really cool game. Have I tried DCSS? No, I have not tried that. What is that? Um, I feel like I've heard about it, but I, I don't know anything about it type of game is it be interested to know let's see I need to like cut off these corners corner piece line block line block Probably called it a uh, slant something. A little slant something or other. I don't know. It's a problem with like having all these variety of like pieces that I can like build basic blockouts with is remembering the name of them gets to be a bit much after a while. Um. Oh, you know what? Uh, that might be like one of the cases where I don't have slant wall and connector. Right, 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 right. These are not what I need. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to make a new piece. I didn't want to make a new piece. I'm going to have to make a new piece. That isn't it, is it? That's way too small. Uh, it's not even the right size either. No, oh, I'll come back to these bits. They can look ugly and open for now. As an auto explorer level feature. Basically, it's designed to remove the tedium. Also, NetHack has ways that games can become unwinnable unrelated to your character dying. DCSS doesn't have these. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, NetHack, you could kind of like box yourself into an unmovable, unwinnable situation. Um, like I said, it, it wasn't perfect, but, um, what I liked about it is it was probably like the closest and earliest um, like parent, uh, not parent, but like sibling to uh, Rogue. Still really hard, yeah. Yeah, that's like one of the key elements of those types of games is they're just brutal, I mean. But I mean, you're you're crawling your way through a dungeon that you're not really supposed to be in, um, and what makes those games so 
interesting is like the danger in them because i feel like playing an ascii art type game uh and there not being any stakes would probably be pretty boring right like there's no like situations that you need to like seriously consider or like think about um you'd essentially just be looking at lines on a screen and i feel like that would get super super boring but i don't know i also have the attention span of like a, a newt so do not do not listen to me i scroll through tiktok slop all day every day well not all day but when i'm not working Extremely good players with a rush character can win a game in approximately one to four hours. But there's also an extended end game and challenge species you can play in DCSS, which you can go for if just beating the game is too easy. Oh yeah, DCSS has a nice tile set as well. Oh cool, it's actually a very pretty game. Let me actually pull this up, I, I'm interested to see what it looks like. Dungeon Crawler Stone Soup. Oh yeah, this is like very pretty. This is like, this is nicely designed. Yeah, this would this would be a lot better to look at than like ASCII art for four hours, right? I mean, I, I know some like rogue and like NetHack enthusiasts would probably like oust me for saying something like that, but I don't know. I value my eyes, you know, I use them every day. I stare at I stare at screen all day, every day. I do not want sharp lines jabbing into my eyes. So having games that like have, you know, kinda pleasant art, pretty good. Speaking of pleasant art, ooh, ooh, our game, our game. This is not a prime example of like the art in our game, to be honest. I mean these are these look nice, but uh these like gray walls are like base base plates before we like do a detail pass and like material swaps yeah it's cool to uh find other people that are like into that type of game right like it's a it's a pretty niche genre um and it's like not something you really like think about all that much um It's just like I can't tell if dollar sign is supposed to be more fearsome than the <laughs> than the hashtag sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of one of the biggest problems with like old games like NetHack. It's just like, oh man, you know, a question mark's running on my screen. Uh, is am I should I be more or less scared than you know an ampersand? I don't know. It's a little bit of imagination, but I appreciate them for making it work in ASCII. But yeah, that's that's a great point. It's it's like how scared can I be really of um, letters on a screen? Apparently, a lot people uh, get really upset about letters on a screen all the time, especially when it's on Twitter. <laughs> oh no! Oh <laughs> no! I've been attacked by a blue double bracket. Let me run past the red percent sign to safety. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a little silly, but you know. Again, conceptually pretty cool. Oop, I meant to duplicate that. Alright, I think we're gonna close off this roof here for now. I think in the final uh I'm gonna like taper it off more and put like lights and stuff in it, but just for sloppy level design sake, I want this. Um... Oh, stop. oh, actually, you know what? That would probably look better a level higher. So let me undo everything I just did. My my my, that's a fine roof right there. Yeah, I like to think so. It's, look at look at how. Look at how it tiles. 
Look at how it's the same material repeating over and over and over and over and over and over. Again, um, I have like more pieces and um, materials and things that I can like swap out, but this is essentially me doing a gray box, right? The only reason I'm not doing a full gray box and using these like tile pieces instead is because, well, it's like, it's like what we were saying earlier. It's, uh, you know, sometimes having something that's a little bit nicer to look at is, um, pretty pleasant. How's everyone doing tonight? We're doing good, man. Yeah, it's, it's good to have you on the stream. Welcome back. Sorry I'm late. I had a date with way too long training days at work. I completely understand. Let's be honest. Any training at work is always too long, right? I mean... It's like, yeah, we get it. I'm, I'm not supposed to... It's like... It's like you're gonna have me do all these like company trainings and I'm and every one of them is be nice to your coworkers, don't fall for phishing scams. Okay. What's the next one gonna be about? Don't fall for phishing scams. Be nice to your coworkers. Alright. What's the next one? Oh, it's the same thing forever, and I have to take forever to do it? Okay. What what are you are you training me on anything new? Anything that could be helpful to my job? No, no. All right, well, I'll do them. I will show you how proficient I am in not clicking on ransomware <laughs> emails from my uh, supposed boss at uh, thisisyourboss at gmail.com slash external. <laughs> Obviously not gonna miss this kind of cave stream. Oh, that's so sweet, man. Well, thanks for joining. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you here. You missed out on some really cool stuff uh, Elemental was talking about earlier. We were talking about we were talking about getting our brains to the fourth dimension, man. You gotta open open your uh, open your mind, open your mind to four dimensions of gaming, right? Now he had a couple ideas for like uh, potential potential games in uh, four dimensions versus three dimensions and uh, we kind of came to the consensus that you would have to be a graphics and like engine engineer and a math genius to be able to pull it off but still think it's a cool idea by the way elemental uh, I'm Sim cook is also a dev he's pretty new to the game but he's got some cool ideas and uh, we're, we are also lucky to have him hanging out in our Discord. Yeah, it sounds super dope, right? It's crazy that we're like getting all these like cool devs just like hanging out, you know, just kind of shooting the shit and talking about dope ideas. Stuff they've worked on in the past, stuff they're working on now, stuff they're going to work on in the future. Always really, really cool. Let's see. I want to add a light to this area. I think it's gonna be a rectangle. Um, we need to increase that source width. Let's go 2000. Did I say two? I meant 20. Um, actually, no, I didn't mean 20. I meant Five? Uh, um, hmm. Let's crank this light up. Oh, yeah, that would help. The old famous rectangle light. Uh, we're gonna go 10,000. It's over 9,000. Wow, what a cool hip reference you did there, Harrison. Surely 
Surely all the kids will love it. Ew. Brother, ew. Yeah, look at that. Look at that lumen bounce lighting. Just like, not... <laughs> it's not having a good time. Um... This feels like, like after you like looked at the sun too long, you get those like squigglies in your eyes. Or it feels like static on a TV. Um. I just want to make sure this is uh, global illumination. Oh, the updating of it's so bad, it's so slow. That sounds super cool. Can't wait to get that beast running around in here. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I cannot await. I cannot wait to have uh, the grub, the grub running around in this nice little terrarium that we're building for him. Um, yeah, he's gonna be a super fun enemy to fight because, I mean, he was he was fun back in the original McSpace Biff. Why wouldn't he be even more gooder? now more more funner words as you can tell i'm slowly losing my grip on reality it has been a long week and it is only thursday um let's see i guess we could go with a spot like a couple spotlights in here because they're I feel like their light updating is like not as bad as so those like box lights. I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just a setting on the um, rectangle light I had. Source width. Wait, no, maybe we just wanna increase the attenuation radius and not the source. That Maybe that was my mistake. Okay, yeah, 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 that that makes sense, right? My issue is it was trying to gather data from too wide of an area, um, which made for like some really weird lumen, uh, like shimmering effects, right? Why is it like cutting through here? I guess because it's like technically projecting down. Hmm. It's not. Is it cutting through the gaps in the geometry? There's no way my light bias is like that low, right? Or that that high? That low? Little high, little low. Little hey, little ho. Stuart Little. Hugh Laurie. No. I don't know. Um. Yeah, it's like cutting through the geometry. It's like doing like, like little gaps. Um, wait, no, it's not. <laughs> I thought these were lights. What this is, it's the word preview being projected down. See, like if I, if I angle it, you can see that it says toward preview. Oh man, I was just like, oh, why, why, why is the light bleeding through these? Like the, the geometry, it's like it's nice and tight and meshed. There's no visual gaps. I'm losing my mind. Um, but yeah, no, it's just it's actually just the word preview uh, stretched out. Preview. Very stoked to watch you light. That's something I'm very interested in understanding better. Classic Stewart, one of M. Knight's finest works. Honestly, yeah. Um, to be honest, uh, I mean, I loved the Stewart Little movies when I was a kid. And, you know, 
I saw like a couple clips of him on YouTube the other day and it looks like it would kind of hold up like that'd be like a fun movie to like watch with like a little cousin or like if you have like a kid or something um I want this to be in the middle of the room but what is the middle of an irregular shaped room I don't know it just has to be close enough right But yeah, I, I kind of feel like the light in this room should be like beaming straight down because the idea is this is going to kind of be like a terrarium for these. Uh... You know what? I should probably have a picture of them on hand because I'm going to be talking about them a lot. Wait, I do have a picture of them on hand. Ooh, ooh. These guys. Can you just imagine these adorable little critters running around in this space? I can. I can. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Stuart Little. Maybe, uh, maybe we get off that topic because that's just we start talking about M. Night Shyamalan and his works, we're gonna be here all night, man. Your son watched it recently. Super underrated. The CGI actually holds up super well, too. Yeah! Yeah, okay. I guess we are talking about this. Um, the CGI in, like, Sierra Little was, like, really good, right? Um, there's, like, a scene where he's, like, in water. Um, where he's, like, in the, in the, uh, washer machine. And it, like, like, to this day, looks solid right and that movie came out like what 2000 like five no it, it probably came out later right uh, i'm gonna do a little something search here when stuart little movie 1999 wow holy crap i'm old yeah CGI looks good. You know what's funny about um, Stuart Little is it's based off of a book, right? But in the book, he's not a rat. Like, he's not a mouse. He is a person who is the size of a mouse with mouse-like features, right? Like, he was born of human parents, and he looked like a mouse. Um... Which I understand why they did they didn't do that in the movie, uh, because that's like that's weird, right? Am I crazy, or or is like Stuart Little being like a human the size of a rat that has mouse features just weird? Um, also, what's crazier to me is like the parents, like <laughs> the Littles coming in and being like. Yeah, 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 all these kids are great, but no, we'll take the rat. We want the rat. It's just like, in the, like, movie, that makes way less sense, right? Because it's just like, there's, like, human kids that want parents there, and you're like, I want the rodent. Give me the rodent. So, yeah. Kind of weird. <laughs> but, um, movie's a banger, right? I mean... He's got a he's got a sick car. I can't remember what car it was. I think it was like a I think it was a Thunderbird. Um, what car did Stuart Little drive? Uh, oh no, it was a Buick Roadmaster convertible. Very cool. Oh, okay, that's why I thought it was a Thunderbird. Um, cause it was like, it was a fifties car. And back then a lot of the, uh, convertibles looked very, very similar. All I remember it was like, it was a red convertible fifties style. And, uh, the most experience I've had with fifties convertibles was my grandfather's 1955 hard top removable, uh, T-Bird. That was a sick car. Helped him, uh helped him replace the transmission on that car one time and oh my gosh does it suck those old 
old like 50s uh cars have like like an x frame they have this like cross x frame and to like get the transmission in you have to like fish it out past the x frame let me tell you if you do not have a lift and you are like up under that car trying to lift a 300 pound transmission and then like slot it back in it's game development's hard working on 50s automobiles much harder Do you think the Moonian set up screens on the walls and ceilings to make it look like they were outside and they were like all shattered and broken because everything's gone to hell? Or would they not care about making them feel out? No, um, I like the concept of like a, a screen, right? Um, I think something like that would be like artificial screens in an area is definitely more the idea that um, Planet America uh, areas would have right because they actually care a little bit about like the living conditions of their colonists versus uh the soviet moonian does not give a crap about you you are a number in a machine you are a cog in a wheel uh they do not care how well you feel what your mental state is like all they care is are you able-bodied can you work good to the gulag with you um, so yeah, they would not, they would not put these like monitors or anything. That's a cool concept though. Um, what I am going to do is I would like to like project, um, you know, like textures on the wall where there's like claw marks, right? Where it's like, they've like tried to burrow through that. Um, <laughs> wait, what? I had no idea that was the original story. That is insanely messed up. Yeah. Stuart Little's a weird weird book dude uh <laughs> human human born to human parents uh the size and features of a mouse it's just like you know i mean kind of can't blame them for like putting them up for adoption right because that's like imagine that if that happened to you it's like you give birth to a rat and you're just like all right well i guess i can't live in america anymore because uh what was that Anyway, it was Michael J. Fox's charisma that drew the parents in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael J. Fox just being, like, universally loved, whether it be, like, as a smarmy teen and a <laughs> hanging out with a disgraced doctor who is, uh, <laughs> like, 50 years older than him, or as a rat uh, <laughs> who is, like, looking to be adopted by human parents. Yeah, Michael J. Fox has that charisma. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do in here is like have like catwalks going across because they would like be observing them from like overhead, right? Like just like walking around, like taking notes. Um, so we're gonna, gonna bust out the bridge, the bridge, take him to the bridge. There it is. Whoa. Wow. That is, um, that is blown out. That's how you know your light's too bright when you can't even see the texture. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause look at the difference in this, right? Normal. Sun. Normal. Highlighter white. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Have any in an intensity that's like at 500. To be fair, it's probably also like the, the paper texture of um, the bridge itself, right? Let me. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, the paper screen opacity is, is too high on this. Oh, you know what? It's probably uh, the metallic bit was too low, too. Hmm.
<laughs> Let me environment opacity roughness point. No, no, we want the roughness high, right? Because it's not like a particularly glossy bridge. It's the specular that I've got some problems with. Make that point two, maybe. See what that looks like. Yes, check out selected. For those of you who do not use Perforce, 10 out of 10, definitely recommend. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the paper screens look way too white. It's got this like weird Fong shader going on right now. Um, I think that's the specular. This could be the roughness. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. Ah! Yeah, it should be a little bit metal, right? This is environment opacity cutout base. Oh, this is a base material. This is not what you do. Um, I should have made like an iteration of this. I'm sure I will realize later when it affects the shading of something else entirely and it feels wrong, but um, for now it's fine. Man, just standing in the middle so stump with those things surrounding you, popping them one by one, leaping at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, this arena is going to have, like, essentially, like, not respites, but, like, things you can jump to, right? Um, to kind of, like, get away from them. Like, these guys just, like, mauling at your feet. Um, just, like, bite. Just bite in your ankles. Just... Uh... But there's still the issue of their like acid spit. So it's like, you know, it's not like a completely safe spot. Because if you sit here too long, they're just gonna up chuck uh, acid at you and you're gonna get like targeted because you're not moving, right? So it's like a, it's like an ebb and flow. It's like, okay, it's like, okay, you got like a second to like reconsider where you're gonna go and then, okay, I gotta go over here and then whoo, whoo. And then, in a lot of cases, they'll actually be able to probably just, like, jump up at you and just, like, bite your ankles. What is going on here? Oh, that's what it looks like when it's all glossy. I don't know if I like that. That's too glossy. It's, it's too glossy. Um... I think it'd be metallic's good, but I think. Uh, six. Well, I don't know why I'm worrying about it. This is a bridge we're going to. Uh, well, actually, you know what? It looks fine over here. It's probably just because it's so close to the light. Um, let me check what it looks like over here in the dark. Yeah, this looks fine. I mean, in fact, it's probably a little too glossy now. What am I doing? I'm taking so much time just tweaking materials. To be honest, so much of development is just like sitting and tweaking values, man. <clears throat> oh, man speaking of those guys leaping at you and taking the shot I think I think we should start working on uh, one of my favorite weapons from the uh, OG make space fifth pretty soon cause um, that the shotgun's just, it's so cool, right? I mean, like, I want to be able to, like, shoot those guys just one, two, three, four, and then, like, you know, swap it to a double barrel and then go, you know, one, two for long range. 
Actually, let me see if it's like in the recent. Yeah, this bad boy, this bad boy right here. It's not finished, but. Like, who doesn't love a good, ooh, who doesn't love a good quad shotgun, right? The quad barrel toggle. Yeah, just, oh, oh, what's this? I'm about to shoot some enemies. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's about probably what it would look like right there, right? It's just so cool. And then, you know, when you want it back in double barrel for long range, it's kind of got this like almost like railgun look to it because it's going to fire slugs. Oh, it's like so close to being done too. Anyway, another day. It's one of those things I like promise myself I'll like come back to. And if I don't come back to it, well, you know, you know, like a terrorist cell is like, got me in a cave somewhere because that idea is too sick to quit. So typically, would you have wanted to add another node on top of the base texture or would you want to instance copy a whole new set of nodes that applied to that one bridge? Um, so, so what, what you can do with materials is you have like, it's, um, you have material instances and then you have like the base material, right? Um, a lot of times what you want to do when building a material is you want to make these values, um, like public floats so you can like edit them later, right? Cause right here uh these aren't exposed values so i can't go into the material on like a top layer um like this i can't go up here and change them i have to like go down uh into the material like logic to change it which isn't good um I mean, it's fine if you don't want it changed. In a lot of cases, you don't want your materials changed. Like once you get like the perfect setting, it's like, okay, that material is done. We're not touching that. Uh, but if you want like a, a changed version of it, you, what you do is you make an instance um, and then you tweak those values there, or like change out the textures there. Uh, we're gonna put this in the middle stuck in the middle hmm this needs to go up just a little bit know if I want to like open both of these spots to this am I gonna have to use like barricades for this oh, that's kind of gross I guess I could like lower the level and just like do like that how's that look oh that's not as bad as I thought Extendo Bridge. Go, go, gadget, Extendo Bridge.
Ah, uh, man, yeah, being that bright bothers me, but... We've never, like, tested it in light this intense. And also, this is, like, artificial light, so I'm not that worried about it being... Kind of weird. Ten four. Yep. The quad barrel toggle. Absolutely, dude. It's so cool. Uh, we're gonna make the we're gonna make that gun at some point. Don't worry about it. Also, we gotta be able to get up to that catwalk, right? And there's some moonian scientist that got trapped up there or is dead with something cool. Actually, maybe that's where the key is. Ah, ah, see, now you're getting it. Yeah, so um, I was talking earlier about uh, this is essentially up here going to be the observation deck. Um, we're just gonna be like little rooms and stuff where they're like looking down to watch. Um, yeah, this is like one of the catwalks you can get across. Um, I think we're gonna make it extra thick in terms of width not height eventually I'm gonna make a double wide bridge but um it's yeah, I'm gonna make it taller if I'm gonna do that I know I'm gonna change it at some point but it just looks bad right I like placeholder stuff to look good. So it's like you never know how long it's gonna be placeholder for. Sometimes it's placeholder forever because you forget to go back to it. Or you just don't go back to it because you're just like, ah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. People don't care. Nine times out of 10, something you care about so deeply in a game, you spend like 90 hours like fixing. People don't even notice it, right? Like they don't even like notice the the thing you were fixing, like the item or the enemy or whatever, like or the area. They don't even go there. They don't even see it. All your effort and all your like worrying nags in the back of your mind was for nothing. <laughs> so sometimes it's just better to be like, yeah, this is good enough. I'll move on to something that is like definitely going to like be in front of people. And I was like super bad about that with like our first game brute. Oh my gosh, dude. I like super OCD, right? Like I would like sit here and like look at a screen and just be like, okay, okay. Let's line up the pixels. Let's make sure everything's like perfect. There's no, 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 no. And then like I would do that all night. And then I would have like a hallway to show for it. So I'm definitely a lot better than I was uh, back then. Also, our like, our like elastic snap kit helps a lot, right? Because I'm like guaranteed for it to be on the grid. So that was like another reason we developed it. Um, I would not want this to be that tall. Um, we're gonna go back down to like 75 height. 75. What? No, sorry, 1.5. That's okay. That's serviceable. Just has to look good enough until I build like an actual asset for it. Do you have plans for the other side of the catwalk? Could be like a little room where all the data is being pulled. Notes about their behaviors. TV's been zoomed in on camera footage of the grubs. Good old fashioned whiteboard. Eh? Meh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking um, this area over here um, is going to kind of be like the the like main data center, and um, I'm gonna give you a couple catwalks that you can like come back across. But um, I'm thinking the way this room's going to operate is grubs are just gonna kind of infinitely spawn in it, right? Like they're gonna like just keep burrowing out of the ground, and there's like. What I'll probably do is if we do those like anti-grub frequencies, we'll put them at the doors so they won't like follow you out. But anytime you enter here, um, they'll always be fighting you. And I am also thinking that um, initially to be able to like get through to this area, 
you're going to have to fight a certain wave of grubs, like a certain number, until one of them coughs up like uh, a key to a door. And that's gonna be more like like a like a standard swipe key card instead of like a like a clearance, right? But yeah, give them a reason to like stay and fight the enemies instead of like cheese it. And I don't necessarily like want to like lock them in the room with it, but um, I could also just do that too, like have like blast doors shut down until like you like kill a certain number cuz it could be like containment protocol activated or something like that and it like shuts down all the doors yeah so how we design it, we wouldn't make it like a specific one right um or if we did it would be after like a certain number so we could give we could give it like a, a random value where it's like in a range so it feels a little different every time um but basically after you've killed a certain number of grubs then one would spit out the key and allow you to like move forward um and it could even spawn like a maybe even like a slightly larger grub uh with like more health and stuff so it's like the it's like the bull grub like it's 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 not going to be like the same as like the bull grub boss, but it's like the largest grub here. Um, and yeah, you just have to fight him and he has like a little more health than the other ones. And yeah, once you kill him, he could even like, <coughs> he could even like cough out like a bunch of bones and like the key card as he died. So we would do like a custom animation. I think it would be worth doing a custom animation for that well actually you know what uh, we would probably want like a coughing up animation for them anyway um, like because there's gonna be instances where grubs will just like probably spit out items right whether it be like health packs or like ammo just any garbage that they've eaten so like if you kill one with that kind of stuff it just goes ah, ah, and then falls over and then dies I think it would be worth doing an animation for that. Okay. I think I want to add like trees and bushes in here at some point, but uh, I currently don't have any tree or bush assets. Um, I have leaves, which are kind of like bushes. Actually, to be fair, put enough leaves together, you have a bush. Right? You do like a. You, that's, that's very bright. <laughs> very bright. Uh, what? Why did it kick me out? Where's, where's my leaf texture? That's too small. Where's my other leaf texture? Leaves? Leaves? Please don't leave. Don't go. Uh, I'm losing my mind. Well, anyway. Yeah, having the grubs double as randomized chests. You know, yeah, because they're like... They're scavengers, right? They just eat... They eat garbage. Uh, they eat quite literally anything. They're like the sandworms of Arrakis. Like, anything that moves, they are... They are guzzling that down, buddy. Um... Man, I had like a good leaf texture somewhere. 
good leaf material. I don't know what I did with it. I go to the other scene to check it out, but whatever. <clears throat> Perfect combo of the desire of the player to see what they could get. Uh, at war with just being terrified of fighting them because I personally think they should be pretty challenging. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to be um, super easy to fight, to be honest. Um, the way they're designed, you can't tell, but um, their hide is like super tough. And uh, they just, they're kind of like bullet spongy. Uh, impacts do more damage, right? Because it's like, it's like kinetic energy pushing through to their organs versus like a bullet that's trying to pierce. Uh, and it's like, so your punches do more damage to them than bullets do, right? Uh, but they have like this like underbelly that's uh, kind of exposed. So in order to get them to like show their underbelly, what you have to do is get them to uh, leap attack at you or like the, they have this like charge roll thing that they do um, in the original mix space if they did it as well um, let's see if I can show it real quick oop oop let me find it let me find it let me find it Man, this game is cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, right there. Like, they have that, like, lunge. They've got, like, a jump. They've got, like, a lunge, like that. And if they were to miss it, they, like, flip over. Um, and they expose their uh, underbelly. So. That's when you'll be able to shoot them. Um. And if they're like rolling, if you get them to like roll into something, that's when they'll like flip over as well. So you have to like, you have to bait their dodge. Um, and we had a lot of enemies similar to that in Root. Um, number one that comes to mind is uh, the Wraith. So the Wraith, uh, as it's fighting you, it has a shield out the whole time, right? So when you're shooting it, bullets are deflecting right off of it. Um, the only time it lowers its shield is when you are in attack range, like range for it to attack you. And he'll put his shield down and like get ready to swing his scythe. Uh, but if you pull away too soon, he'll put his shield back up. So you have to like, you know, time it just enough to where he'll fully start the swing. And if you dodge it, you can dump clips into him and get a lot of damage. So it'll kind of be like that with the grubs on like a smaller scale. Um, and also, um, as they're jumping at you, um, they open their mouth, and their mouth is going to be a weak spot. So it's like a critical area. But you don't, to like get those shots in, you don't have a huge window. So doing that in tandem with dodging uh, is very important. Yeah. I think it's a pretty cool enemy design. It's a, it's a very versatile enemy, and because it's the type of enemy that burrows up from under the ground, you can... Um, I don't want to say, like, dynamically change the difficulty, but you can kind of put as many in or as few in based off of, like, how the player's doing or, like, how much health and ammo they have. Um, and one thing we could potentially do is if the player is in an area where they do not have a lot of health... Um, we could spawn grubs because it's a type of enemy that doesn't have like consistently long range attacks and essentially treat them as like fresh ammo boxes right um they will have their like spitting attack where they can like lob acid at you but uh the acid shots are going to be like super slow right like they're going to have like a really long arc and you can like just definitely dodge them um if you're paying attention but it's it's to like it's to keep you from cheesing them right um because if you're standing in one segment in an area that they can't reach you just like bah, 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 just shooting them uh them lobbing those acid attacks will like force you to like move positioning 
I feel like um, almost all types of enemies should have some way to deal with like someone trying to cheese them, right? It's it's super important uh, when it comes to like both level and like enemy design. Uh, one thing we're considering doing for uh, the Moonbot Boxer is like giving them like some sort of like almost like armor lock energy shield where if they are just getting like hammered from really far away they they can like lock up and uh, tank a ton of damage um, which kind of forces you to engage them in a, in a way that they can do damage to you not guaranteed but it's it's one thing we're considering Makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Glad you agree. Um, let's add another bridge. Um, oh, wow, that was laggy. Right over here. Let me know if at any point the uh, stream is getting like kind of choppy. I know I was having some issues earlier. Um, Will was saying like there was like a buffering problem. I don't know why, but like my internet's been like super, super flaky lately. Um, maybe it's because like all the rainstorms. I don't know. Like the the apartments I live in are like kind of old, They're like from the eighties. Uh, ooh, yeah, no, that's not good because then it's like intersecting the corner. I don't like that like things to be like flush um it's not necessary but it's like a it's a peeve of mine generally speaking i like to design my spaces in a way that uh you could imagine a real person designing it so when it's like on a corner intersection like that, I think it just like, well, that would be like an engineering nightmare, right? So, do I not have? I don't have a forty-five half wall. That's that's not okay. Uh. I should have them for like this kind of situation, right? Hmm. Show an explorer. Let's see. Show in folder view. I guess I could do probably like a wall proxy. Man, oh man. Oh yeah, these pieces. I need to like uh, work these onto our grid at some point. Um, I don't know if you've seen these before, but uh, these are for like, um, Yeah, look at that. Perfect example of why we need the snap kit right there. Dumb stuff like that.
curved pieces for like uh, essentially like curved interiors. Yep, not set up on the snap kit for shame. But uh, these are actually the these are technically built for the snap kit. Um, let me just. Oop. They're just not on it right now. I think. Having these types of like walls is, is kind of cool. Then you know. What? No, that's not. Oh, they all have different rotations. Ew. Kind of interesting. Types of structures, these shapes, right? And all while being on our snap kit. A nice reminder that we've got some other types of structures planned. Um, a lot of the like nomad structures are kind of gonna be like that, like classic white sci fi rounded structure. Anyway. Kinda cool, kinda not really important right now. I'm gonna do a wall half here. Take this off the grid. We'll take that. Bring that there. 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 And then we're going to break a cardinal rule of mine. It's 1.15. Yeah, that's fine. doesn't have to be perfect, it's just got to be good enough. Actually, I think 1.2 is probably more appropriate. Maybe even 1.25. No, yeah, 1.25 makes some, a lot more sense. Uh, but the problem is the tiling. Oh, 
Oh man, I just remembered I gotta sign up for that wolf eye uh, alpha. Oops. Uh. Oh, what am I doing? Um, I just do that twice. Point eight, no, point seven five, no, closer, warmer, 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 that. Okay, that's probably, that's probably it. Yeah. It's gonna bother me, but I'll come back to it later. Yo, Sim Cook, you know we're doing a, uh, we're doing another co-op stream, well. Huh? not something we're gonna do like all the time but I I like the idea of like us doing joint streams just it's interesting right I mean to show off development from two perspectives at the same time the problem is we end up like kind of distracting each other but it is like that classic uh, game dev experience right where it kind of feels like just you and your buddies hanging out in a room I miss that sometimes. You know, that's how we got started, you know. Working in a in a laundry room, right? Not a garage, not a living room, not like a apartment, a laundry room. Can you imagine that? Four like fully grown, like sweaty, grody teenagers, um all cramming into like a twenty by twenty uh laundry room. Where it already smelled like like unwashed clothes and then we're like also adding to the funk like quite literally touching elbows i'm working off of like a uh an old like 19 inch toshiba laptop that's like setting my jeans on fire it's like so hot just from uh trying to run any kind of like editor right because it was like so old Okay. This is, you know, just coming along. I'm not hating this room as much as I did when I started. Um, you know what? We're going to bring this down. Right there. And I think we're gonna make this like another observation window. Thinking this right here is going to be probably the entrance to the next area. So I'm actually gonna open this up some half walls uh, let's use some floor pieces make this like a type of room you'd like run up to Only issue is it's like not quite the center of the room, but I'm kind of okay with that. I'm a big fan of like asymmetrical design, as long as it's like still kind of obvious where you have to go. 
Um, and I feel like if I kind of make it taller, um, we want to bring it down a little bit though. Let's. We gotta change the name of this at some point, but we'll add these. Almost like trim. Oh no. Ah, oh, that's right. and less and less and then we bring that up there yeah it's not clean but it will do the job yeah because I wanted to be I want the player to like run in this room and be able to kind of see that entrance from anywhere. Whether they come in from this direction or this direction over here. I am thinking I will probably give the player a another way in. some stuff real quick let in copy these again uh, pull that there <coughs> excuse me <coughs> you know what we're just going to Replicate all this and use it as the floor, not the floor, uh, the ceiling. I'm kind of liking that shape. Not about y'all, but I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, since this is just going to be back, we can just use these. to Oop, didn't turn it 90 degrees that's definitely not what I wanted to do that's what I wanted to do yeah because I don't want to like these like alcoves that players can hide behind um, but I like this like inset area and I don't even know actually if I want them to be able to come through this way now that I'm thinking about it. I think this could just be like a, a cool little observation deck that got like smashed up. So you could have like glass and stuff over here, right? And like all the glass is gone. Uh, have like flipped over chairs and like desks and computers um, and just kind of make it part of the arena just as like some environmental flavor right and like an easy example of like why the enemies in this like terrarium type thing could like get to them so quickly so I don't want it to go too far back right because it's it's still supposed to be kind of like a cohesive part of the arena that's probably enough 
And also, I generally want to, uh, I want the arena to kind of be like this, like, oblong oval. And that kind of gives a little more space to cut in. Um, and the, the problem with this area over here is, uh, originally it was like all downhill and this was like the one advantageous spot. Now we have like a, a kind of similar height. So it kind of keeps like a, a valley and a, and a high over here, which I like. So I wanted to give the player more vantage points, but I didn't want it to feel too samey. Like I said, I like, I like a little bit of variety when it comes to different, different parts of my level. I want everything to be not necessarily visually distinct, but to be able to tell where you are at any given point is uh, very important. Also with like the lower ceiling, this feels like psychologically like a safe space, right? So mainly because you have like a back, back against the wall and like protection from the sides, but I don't know. It could also be interesting as like a like an observation area that hasn't been broken into where you can like see everything um, before the arena. And then maybe like some blast shields that come back down. That could be neat too. Stuff like that is where playtesting comes super super nanny right because you know you think you have an idea of like what's gonna be good and then sometimes it just turns out to be garbage um once we have those grubs i think um we'll be able to test a lot of these like types of environments I think it's gonna fill out like a really nice space in our roster. Uh, let's put that up there. No, I want you to be flipped. There we go. Yeah, these are these are looking good. Yeah, just having a bunch of like, you know, knocked over tables and um, computers and like servers and stuff will be good for this. No, that's right. These aren't like as thick. Hmm. No, I'm gonna leave them as is. We give a ramp over here, right? Oh, you know what? Um, there we go. That right yeah, it wasn't I was correct Good right now. Yes, it is. Pull that over. 
over. Oh, that's right. This ramp isn't on the snap kit anymore, so. That needs to go there. And then that needs to go there. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this. Put it back on the snap kit. And then set the grid to 384. Nope, wrong one. Wrong one. 128. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's looking like like a ramp you should be wanting to walk up. Pull that over here. Oh, come on, man. Where are the pieces I'm looking for? That looks like it, but that is not it. Hmm. Well, I could just do this again. Nah, that's fine. That's good enough. Hmm. Nope. I hate it. It's not fine. so bad it's so bad <laughs> and sometimes you just like get in these like creative like blocks where you don't know what to do um, no I think it was fine in the first place it's just like those little like juts oh you know what that's I like that it just has to go up just a little, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I was like losing my mind there for a moment. Let's see. Let's bring this down. Down and over and under and above. 128. Snap that up. See, this is why I don't like not using our, like, custom grid snap stuff. It's, like, all just a little bit off. Nah. Whatever. Looks good enough. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, I think what I'll do here is, uh, we'll do like a little like blast door or something. I need to erase some of this foliage. Foliage can't grow on stairs. Well, 
Not like that, anyway. Uh, ba -ba Let's see. I honestly need to do some more terrain sculpting in here, because it's, like, really weighty in the middle. And this area is not going to feel... This area is not going to feel very good to, like, fight in. Just because it's... It is so, so, so uh, sloped downhill. I kind of want people to use equal parts of the arena. I mean, I did go to all the effort of building the whole arena, so I would like most people to use most of it. Another instance of me just babbling, but I could see going up into that data room or somewhere, maybe downstairs, and having, say, four buttons that each release food bits from one four shoots in different spots down the terrarium. They use them to feed them, but also to get them to huddle in certain areas. Could be funny if you press enough that something else comes out. Ooh. I do like that. That's the kind of thing we would do um, if we had like the sandworm model already ready right um or just even like the bull grub behaviors because if you like hit a button to, like spawn the food and you know like they come they come out when you like do that right um if we had like a bull grub and then you like get like a secret bull grub fight that'd be pretty funny kind of interesting but we don't have bull grub mechanics. I'm loving all these ideas, man, though. Like, keep them coming. There's no such thing as a bad, bad suggestion. Well, that's not true, but yours have been good, is what I'm trying to say. All right, I think I'm going to slope this up over here. Where it like kind of makes sense that they could actually you know what that that's not gonna look good uh we'll do it over here <laughs> i gotta smooth this out path here though so I don't know if I want to like slope it up too much so, yeah no that that looks kind of fine the way the geometry is though I, I kind of want this area like built up more but yeah I, I really like that idea of like interactable stuff in the world where you just kind of like fiddle with things and then something happens right like it triggers another like type of mechanic like to be honest like that's the type of thing where um you could use that as like a mechanic in the overworld right like you could essentially have like these like i don't know what you call them like I guess like remote deer feeder type things um where if you like hit a button it would like activate something somewhere else and just like spit out feed on the ground uh, and you could like wait for enemies to like pass over it and then you do it and then you know the sandworm comes up and eats them that'd be very funny it's like kind of an easter egg but it's also like a bit of a trap type mechanic That's just me spitballing, though. <laughs> you love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a neat idea. 
I love uh, anything that's like kind of cause and effect. Like for instance, where it's like, you know, you do something like fill up an arena with water, right? Cause you like break a nozzle off and then, you know, you like wait for enemies like to go in the arena and then you kick on the power and you know, uh, it's what cooks the enemies, but it's also like what carries an electrical current to like uh, another box to like continue to carry the current. But now like to get across the arena, you have to like do platforming. Like you can't touch the water yourself cause you'll die. But like originally something like that, where it's like, there's no water in the arena the first time. Cause you have to like run across, fight a bunch of enemies and then like turn on the receiver for the electrical current. And then, you know, you run back across and then, you know, you fill the arena up with water and then the broken like electrical cord now has like a current to charge the other end. But now you can't, now you can't cross the arena. Now you gotta do like platforming, stuff like that. That's the type of puzzle I'm talking about that I want in uh, McSpace Piff. In fact, like this level is like a prime candidate for that type of puzzle. In fact, I should probably write that one down. I kind of like that a lot, actually. It's pretty simple, kind of classic. Nothing like crazy about it. Oh, and you know what? What you could probably do with that type of environment, right? So it's like, at first you fight, um, like melee moon bots on the ground and uh you know they're like tough and everything but you know you kind of like out shoot them or whatever and like punch them and then you go on and like turn on the receiver and then um by the way i'm only using this arena as like an example but like you like turn on the receiver for the electricity and you know there's like an electrical cord on the ground and it's like it's cut right and part of it's going to the ground here part of it's going in the ground there and there's just like water levels that you can like lower and raise. Um, and to get the electrical current going, you fill the water level up, but now you can't touch the water. So you have to like do it as a platformer. But when it powers up, uh, it opens like a release hatch for like drones. So now you have to fight drones while like doing this platforming stuff, right? So before it was like, kind of easy you're on the ground but now you gotta like do this like platforming bit and like fight drones so it's a different type of fight both ways i think i think that would be pretty cool as long as the like platforming isn't like terribly difficult and there's like not too many drones because uh the problem with that is like it you know it could get annoying having to like do a a platforming puzzle and um fight drones <laughs> or um i guess you could do the inverse right where originally you fight drones because you have more uh space to maneuver uh and then do something like on the like little platform areas there's like moon bots waiting to like punch you problem with that is like they don't really have any way to engage you and they could like cheese you but having a an enemy that can like freely function despite the environmental hazard is like a very classic video game thing right like fighting man hacks over um electrified water sucked but uh in hindsight is like it's always like really cool and like you feel really good for beating it right so I feel like we could probably do something similar with our drones, especially since we're gonna give them like a, a different type of attack. 
and honestly there's probably going to be variants of them um like there might be a variant of drone that just like kind of drill attacks you right they'll have like a tell where they'll like sit in the air do like a spin spool up and then dive at you good sense of accomplishment and that's you know that's that's all we really want from a puzzle right like we want it to feel like yeah i outsmarted the level and i also outplayed the level goodness gracious i'm like the more i do these streams like the more i like start to lose my voice <coughs> It's becoming a problem. That's because I spend all day like sitting in meetings and then, then I like hop on here and just have to ramble myself for hours, which to be fair, I do anyway. So yeah, it is what it is. One of these days I'll like take like a proper vacation and like actually rest. Probably once the Make space bit vertical sliver is done. I'll do like a nice little like getaway vacation. Give myself at least a little bit of time to recharge before diving into like our next project. Dude, please rest. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm. I work all the time. Like, to be honest, before I started streaming, I was working more on Mixed Space Piff uh, than I am now. Because before, I was like, every day, I was working until 2 a.m. on the game. And uh, on days where I stream, I only work from um, 8 to 11. But, but before it was like I worked from like 6.30 to 2 now that said I still work it's uh, just on like <laughs> it's just a different time it's like at video editing and like making sure like everything is like ready to go up online making sure like stream quality is good um, that kind of stuff so I am technically getting less done on the game but um I think it's important that we kind of document our progress, right? When it's also like a good motivator, because it's like, okay, you're not in this like isolated bubble where you're like working on the game. You're like, I don't know if this is like just awful or not. And you have a chance to like kind of talk some things out. Um, you know, you'll get like distracted going on like tangents and stuff, but um, you're at least guaranteed like a certain number of hours of work right like it's a lot it's a lot easier to be like okay i can't do other things right now because i'm streaming the game and i'm making the game um but when you're just like on your own it's like oh i got a text message i'll answer the text message oh i got a notification I'll, I'll i'll check that notification um so in reality you know the work it's probably not as focused or as pure, but it might end up equating to being more work overall in general. It's hard to say, right? Because it's just completely different work styles. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of like, kind of digging this room, man. I'm very happy with how it's turning out. I'm very much looking forward to fighting, fighting these guys in it. Look at those guys. Aren't they so cute and punchable? <laughs> Just <laughs> Oh man. <coughs> Yeah, 
I, I think this is going to be like a fun little arena. Hard work really shows, especially as you build the YouTube presence. The shorts are doing pretty damn well, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, especially when you're just, like, spitballing with, like, random people who are coming into the chat and just, like, just going on rants and tangents. I mean... You give me a platform and I will... I will talk about nonsense and, uh... It will be frightening, some of the things that come out of my mouth. Not because they're, like, offensive, just, like, just how abhorrently stupid some of the ideas I have. <laughs> like, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I got pretty heated about talking about Stuart Little earlier, and it's just like, why do I care about that? It's like, <laughs> it's just a weird little kid's book, but, you know, hey, something to talk about. Yeah, this room is great. Hey! Hey, you didn't even make the great pun. Wow. Dude, you're slipping. Your dad jokes are slipping, man. <laughs> I need to finish off this room over here. This guy's looking lonely. Yeah, I'll come back to this. I'm digging the uh, terrarium at the moment. I care because it's important. Yeah. Or is it important because I care? Does caring about something inherently give it value? I don't know. Something to think about. Personally, I think it does. Let's give him... SMG. I'm gonna get a feel for like. Oh, a little dodge. Uh, like a backwards dodge, a little side dodge, ground dodge. Super jump! Super jump! Yeah, I'm feeling good about the general, like, spacing of this scene. Hooray! <laughs> okay, so you can get up here with crouch jumping, that's good. Whoops. If I knew what I was doing. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, it's about the same. I was just making sure that the uh, third person and first person jump height is the same. Cheap views. Oh my gosh. Wow. Boy, I can't wait to click that malware link. Uh, Y'all in the chat, do not do not click that. That is that is spam. Uh, let's see here. Hey, guess what? You get to be banned. Band. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm not letting you give malware to my viewers. They're here for a chill time watching a crazy person make a video game. Very rude. Big old can of spam. Yeah, you gotta you gotta bust it out on them sometimes. You know. There's three cans, four cans, five cans that I believe in. I believe in the, uh, in the you can, as in like you can do it. 
I believe in in the toucan, as in uh, you know, the guy who sells all that delicious, colorful tier cereal. Um, I believe in the can of spam and the can of whoop ass. What's the fifth one? Well, that's the mystery, isn't it? Stick around. You might find out. I really need to add that uh, crouch jump animation because this... <laughs> That's not, that's not going to fly. <laughs> sneak, 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 sneak. Roll, 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 roll. <laughs> uh, oh, man. You don't applaud that. That's too stupid, man. That was legendary. Oh. Yeah, but not in the good way, right? Uh, I promise I'm gonna make a glass shader at some point that will like be appropriate for this, but for now we're just gonna leave these like open windows and promise to come back to them. This is this room's gonna be like it's it's like a whole thing, right? And it's gonna snake its way back up. I'm thinking once you come in here, uh, the blast door is gonna like drop again. Odd in the night. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, it's going. We're just wrapping up this like uh, terrarium we're working on. It's come a long way, honestly. Um, ignore these pieces over here. Those are. Those are non-sanctioned, non-grid cell snap pieces, and they are a blight to my eyes. We're gonna work them in at some point, but um, for now we're using all right angles. All 45 and or right angles. Those, those angles were all wrong, so we're not using them. Oops my own console commands. Yeah, so Otten, uh, I know you were hanging out on uh, Will's stream uh, last time when he was working on this guy. I don't know if you saw the end of it, though. Um, your internet was down all day today. Oh, man, that stinks. Yeah, I was wondering why you were uh, joining so late. Normally, you're you're uh you're an on time kind of guy. Here for the party. Here for the majority of it. Here for the good times and game dev stuff. But yeah, uh Will was working on this guy last time. Um and he finished out the 3D model. He's gonna like patch up like the uh, normal maps and everything, and he's gonna start texturing it. Uh, but that guy is going to be in this arena. So that is who you're going to be fighting in here and I am very much looking forward to it because uh, he was in our original game and uh, it to be honest he's probably the funnest enemy to fight in the original version of mixed space buff just having them like kind of waddle at you and like do these like dives um, they had a pretty wide uh, move set they would they could like spin at you to like try and like kick you back um is it a boss or a normal enemy mm, good question it's both um so in the original mcspace biff we had like small versions of this guy well like a normal sized version and they like ran at you and you could like shoot them and they like fall over and they could like Trying, like punching stuff and then we had like a bull grub version right uh let me scrub back over to you fighting him Oop, whoa, whoa, whoa. where are we where are we where are we you think i would remember my own trailer 
Uh, yeah, this guy too. This guy's gonna be the uh, the boss at the end of this level. The breakdancing tripod. Let me scrub back. Let's see, where's the big old grub, big old grub, big old grub. There he is. Okay, right. So he had a couple move sets where he could like roll at you, right? Oh, and back then, uh, the first person rolling was first person the whole time. So it was very disorienting. We're not gonna do that again. Um, the, grub, the grub would like roll at you, almost like he's like Sonic or something. You would like have a body slam and then you'd like have like a knockback dash. Um, so that's what the, you know, um, boss version of this guy's gonna do. But yeah, um, generally they're just gonna be kind of like a random uh, fauna character that can just like pop up whenever. And uh, considering these guys are like omnivores that will just eat eat anything uh they're gonna be like a really good source of like getting ammo and like health packs and just like items and stuff so um and they'll have a couple different types of attacks right their outer hide is gonna be like super tough against like bullets but their mouth is gonna be very very vulnerable as like a, like a weak spot and you can't see underneath but there's like an exposed belly so when they attack you and they flip over, that's when you can like damage them a lot. But yeah, it's a, uh, this is like a arena I'm designing with how they're going to play in mine. Cause I kind of already know how they're going to function, right? Cause it's essentially a redesign of an enemy we've already had. Uh, it's been, you know, a decade since we designed them, but. I kind of have an idea. Um, also, this time around, we're gonna give them uh, a ranged attack. They'll eat anything, you say. That's true, they will eat anything. Anything they can, anyway. Ah, what if you can distract them by throwing something to eat? Uh, funny enough, we were actually talking about that earlier, having like food dispensers in here. Um, and potentially just like, Throwing like scent bombs or something so they just like attack anything in that vicinity. Could be kind of cool. Um, in many cases, though, you'll find like uh, after you kill them, they'll like cough up bones or like um, ammo or key cards, anything of the sort. So they're like, they're essentially like a moving treasure chest, which I think kind of cool. And because they can burrow up from anywhere, um, we can kind of put however many or few as we want. Yeah, this is... Um, they'll eat anything. You can sacrifice your ammo, maybe. Oh, that'd be interesting. Like, you could... So, we were actually talking about um, being able to throw your gun, right? Because we really like that mechanic in... Um, Counter-Strike, where you could like toss a gun to your friend if they didn't have one, um, or just to like swap. So being able to like spit your gun out and then like have them go chase it could be interesting. Um, it might be too strong as like a mechanic, but I do like the concept. Maybe. Maybe something like a... What you could probably do is like have an item instead that they like specifically would target over you. Maybe like a scent gland or something. Similar to like the antlions from like Half-Life 2. Um, that could be cool. Anyway, um, great to have you on the stream. I think we're getting ready to wrap it up though. Um, just because it is getting into the later hours of the evening and we've got a dual stream coming up tomorrow and I want to make sure I am actually well rested for that because uh, I think it's going to be a banger. 
I think we're gonna, you know, we're gonna finish texturing the grub and, you know, I'm gonna maybe put some finishing touches on this like area here and to be honest, it's like starting to kind of feel like a cohesive level a little bit. Yeah, you're a bit lit to join. I'm sorry, man. If I could stream all night, I would, but uh... funny enough, I actually have uh, PTO tomorrow. Like I took a day off uh, to do the the joint stream, and also just because I'm going out of town after. But uh, yeah, dual stream, dual stream, dual stream, dual stream, dual stream. Um, but I still have to like log in to my job tomorrow morning, like kick on promotions and stuff for the company I work for, because uh, I'm the one who knows how to do it the best. So. I'm being nice and I'm logging in, helping them out tomorrow morning. Um, so I actually have to sleep a little bit tonight. Um, also, I feel like if I talk too much longer, my my voice is gonna give out. I mean, I'm you can you can probably hear it already, but it is it is it is going. It's going the way of the dodo. Yeah, I'm uh. I'm really happy with like how this is turning out, especially like with feedback. Y'all have had some great ideas. Uh, as always, been super, super chill. It's great to have you. Uh, Auten, hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, if you can make the dual stream. If not, I completely understand. Internet, internet be crazy sometimes. Mine is uh, been super shaky myself. So uh, we'll see how that dual stream goes tomorrow. But uh, yeah, great to have y'all here as always, and uh, I'll see you next time.